Greetings, I'm Dr. Hong Yixik. Today, I'm going to talk about how to remove connector after milling and about coloring. These are the contents for today. After milling, connector is removed, coloring before centering. And I'm also going to talk about starting centering. Once milling is done, from the disc, crown is removed. As shown, once milling is done, the disc is connected here. You remove it, and then connector is removed. Fisher bar is used to remove connector. Once crown is separated, as shown, denture bar is used to remove unnecessary bits. I'm going to show you how it's done via the video clip. From zirconia disc, a crown is going to be separated. In the case of posterior area for milling, there is approximately three connector, one on buckle and two on the lingual side. In the case of premolar or anterior area, there is one on buckle side and one on lingual side, so two connectors. When you remove connector, as shown, use Fisher burr, which is thinner. And this is most ideal based on my experience. For separation, you need to hold the crown firmly and then do the cutting. If you hold it loose, as the crown comes off, the milling burr can damage the crown. You need to hold firmly and then do cutting. The one or two connector on the lingual side, you can use it as a hook to remove crown after centering. So you can leave it, make it longer. It is not cut thoroughly. You leave a little bit behind. Now I'm going to move on to the buckle one. You remove cautiously. Crown is now separated from the disc. One of the two lingual connector is going to be used as a hook to remove crown. The connector on the buckle side, it obstructs in expressing color. Therefore, connector on the buckle side is thoroughly removed. In order to trim it, gently use narrow and smooth denture burr instead of fissure burr. Now I'm going to trim the rest. Connector on the buckle side has been removed and I'm only going to leave one connector on the lingual side. Connector has been removed from crown. I'm going to use this one as a hook for removing crown. For premolar, there's connector on buckle side and another one on the lingual side. It is very close to the margin and therefore you need to pay a lot of attention when you remove it. The lingual sprue is going to be used as a hook so I'm going to make it long. Connector is going to be removed. I'm going to be very careful. It's thin here. If you rush, crown can fracture. Carefully, I'm going to remove the connector on the lingual side. This one I'm going to use as a hook, so I'm going to make it longer. As shown, 
crown has been removed from zirconia disc. After that, I'm going to make it smoother. In order to do that, rather than using fissure burr, using denture burr, which is smoother, is more safe. As shown, denture burr is used. You hold the crown very firmly so that it doesn't move in order to avoid damage to the crown. The connector on the buckle side is removed foremost because it obstructs with coloring. Connector on the lingual side is going to be used as a hook for insertion and removal. And this much length is going to remain once the closure adjustment is done, this can be removed. This is right after removing crown from the disc. There's one connector on the buckle side and two on the lingual side. Out of the two lingual connectors, one is kept so that it is used as a hook when crown is removed. One connector on the buckle side and the other on the lingual side is trimmed like this. After that, coloring begins. These are the three types of coloring kit that I use. On the left is Chang's coloring kit, second, Luxin coloring kit, third, UNC coloring kit are used. The first has a very strong effect and therefore it can be difficult to use for beginners. Luxin Colory Kit and UNC Coloring Kit, they are rather diluted, therefore, on the same area, even if you apply it repeatedly, there's little possibility of making a mistake. The coloring liquid, you can use it in a cartridge type brush or use palette and brush on the right. However, cartridge weight is much more even and you can do it more precisely. Therefore, cartridge weight is recommended. A2 shade, A3 shade is here, A3.5 shade, A4 shade is here. The base is determined with these colors. On the cusp to express NML, there's NML. To express orange on the cervical side, there's cervical color. The white opaque color is for severely discolored tooth or to block out the metal color of implanted crown. It is applied on the inner surface of the crown. The gray color, it gives translucency. And it does not really give the dramatic effect. Last, on top of enamel, in order to give translucent effect, this agent is used. These agents, you can use it on the cartridge type of brush and apply it. In the case of first molar, basically the occlusal surface is lighter and the more you go to the cervical area, it becomes more orange. A2 shade block is used and milled. You can make something bright darker, but it is difficult to make something dark brighter. Therefore, a disc with lighter color has been chosen. 
the shade on the cervical side and shade on the central side of the occlusal surface, they are very similar and therefore on the cervical area and center of occlusal surface, I'm going to use a 3.5. cartridge type brush you can easily adjust the amount of the agent you're going to use it is easier than using a brush cervical area it has been applied now i'm going to do the same for the occlusal surface for gradient effect of color on top of a 3.5 i'm going to add another layer of a3 shade for the cervical area orange color is going to be used it's going to be applied lightly like this from cervical area body incisal area the color changes gradually darker a 3.5 a3 a2 it becomes very gradual and natural looking molar color can be achieved in this patient if you look at the initial photo the patient has a very distinctive color traits on the incisal area it's very bright the more you go cervical area it becomes darker and there's also a stripe pattern here in this case you cannot express the patient's natural tooth with just coloring and after coloring the basics after centering to apply staining in order to really reflect the patient's characteristics on the tooth the cervical area is expressed using a 3.5 in a vertical way and on top of it a3 is used and coloring is done like this the coloring agent seeps deep into the zirconia crown and coloring is done this way as a result even if you do a closal adjustment the color does not disappear you can say that this is determining the basic color of the crown finally to express the dark bit in the cervical area in order to express this light orange cervical color is added on the occlusal side the patient's tooth was lighter and a cervical a3 was used although a3.5 was used previously coloring was done on the central area like this coloring is now complete now i'm going to move on to the centering stage coloring stage once it's all done you move on to the centering stage after centering the size of the outcome after milling shrinks about 20 percent so now it can actually be used in patient mouth i'm going to show you the centering process via the video clip the crown which was colored is now being placed in a container the occlusal surface of the crown should head towards the bottom once the lid is placed 
In order to get rid of the moisture in the agent, you put it in the oven and leave it there for about five minutes. You put it in for five minutes in the oven before sintering. After five minutes, take out the container and put it in the sintering machine. And after determined period of time, crown is complete. After 8 hours, the crown size changes to what can be used in patient mouth. In centering machine, there is two modes. There is normal centering mode and quick centering mode. In normal centering mode, it takes about eight hours. In quick centering mode, it takes about one hour. If you center crown in normal centering mode, you can get very aesthetic results. As shown, Zirconia crown color is very natural and is translucent. If you center using quick centering mode, although the time is shorter, the downside is that the color becomes wider and more opaque. Therefore, in aesthetic area, it is difficult to use quick centering mode. Compared with normal centering mode, it is more white and opaque. As a result, it is used frequently for second molar and the upper. Now I'm going to talk about conclusion. I've talked about coloring and centering. Coloring determines the color of the tooth. Gradual changes of the color in the natural tooth is expressed on the crown. Centering process. There is normal centering and quick centering. It determines the translucency of the tooth. You need to use it for the right patient and choose appropriate indications. This is the end of my presentation, and now we're going to move on to Q&A session to address your questions further. First the question, what needs to be prepared in order to do coloring more naturally? The most important thing is to secure a pre-op image. A natural crown blends in with the adjacent teeth. As a result, if you don't have a pre-op image, it is very difficult to, to recreate natural color. In order to make a color of crown more natural, you need to have pre-op image. And based on that, coloring and staining needs to occur. Second question. Please tell us indications for quick centering and normal centering mode. In most cases, crown goes through normal centering mode. However, because of patient's circumstance, if crown needs to be made within a very short period of time, if crown needs to be delivered on the same day, quick centering mode is used. In this case, the crown becomes more opaque and white. There is such tendency. As a result, more so than the general way, you need to intensify the color by one or two stages. This is the end of my lecture. Next time, I'm going to talk about polishing and staining the centered crown. Stay tuned. Thank you.